I'm going to show you how to make a basic memory or matching game that can be played in Google Slides uh, between a shared document or with the teacher and the student or even over Zoom or Google Meets or other options like that. So the first thing you want is you want a blank um, slide in Google Slides and of course you can delete any defaults that are there but you can also go to layout and choose the blank layout. And you're going to want to insert a table. I'm just going to make this a 4x4 four four table. Depending upon how many cards that you want, uh, you'll make it one size, uh, whatever size that works for you and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. I'm just dragging it out so that it fills most of the slide and then I'm going to drag it into place. You can see the, the red crossbars vertically and horizontally showing me that this object is now centered on the slide. I'm going to change the borders. I don't like the default gray. I like a little more contrast. So I'm going to change it to black and then change its thickness a little bit. Now I need to determine what size font I can use. And so I'm going to be working with some sight words. I just picked that as an easy thing to practice. So I'm going to put in one of the, the larger words or the longer words. And then I'm going to set that uh, font size to be how I want it to be for the whole table once I determine what's best for that particular word. So I've picked a favorite font of mine that's very simple and easy to read for students and I put that in there and I'm making it as large as I want it to be. The larger the better um, when you're doing this in a virtual format. And then I want it to be centered both left to right and top to bottom. And then once I've done that, I'm going to use those settings for the whole table. I'm going to use highlight the word or highlight the cell that's formatted the way I want. Click on the paint format and then I'm going to highlight the rest of the table. And it should apply that format and it did not apply it. It applied the font, but not the location within the cell. So I'm just going to make that change now to everything. And then I'm going to make my board really quick. So I'm just going to put pairs in random places. So again, I'm looking at uh, on a different screen right now. I'm not just coming up with this on the top of my head. I'm looking at a, a list of sight words and I'm putting them in pairs away from each other. Sorry, my table is squeaky. Um, so that I can hide some matches. And fun. There are some that are right next to each other. Kids don't tend to expect that. If you don't like how that turned out where there were too many that were right next to each other, obviously you can delete and uh, move them around however you want before you set your game board. Oh, the brilliant thing that I forgot to do before I went on is I want to go ahead and duplicate this slide, but I want to create an empty template. And the reason why is I could type over this each time, but then it's kind of hard to keep track of where my blanks are. But I'm going to duplicate this several times once I've set the table size, once I've set the font, once I've set all the formatting that I want. And so that if I'm making more than one board, it's going to get a little easier after that. Here's your super, super pro tip. Like this is what you really want from this video, what you want to take away is that once you have your game board set, you want to download it as one of the image options. I choose ping and then you can actually delete the table and then set as your background. You can choose the file that you just downloaded. And the reason why you want to do that is so that n you or any of the people using this cannot accidentally delete this. So if your students are taking off some of the card covers, they won't accidentally delete the words in the background. Um, and so th that's another reason why I made sure I copied these, this empty table, because as I make more, obviously I can't type over what's here unless I just put literally another table on top of it, but that doesn't make any sense. So now that I have the word set, they are set in a way there as, as a background image, they can't be deleted. Now I'm just going to put some shapes on top to cover those. And then uh, one thing that I learned was if I tried to put these shapes as close as possible to each other, then it was hard for students to be able to click the exact one they wanted. Uh, so I just make them a little bit smaller than the space. It covers the word still, 
but there is no uh, difficulty. A random dictionary pop up. Difficulty with clicking exactly what you want, um, which of course takes into consideration students that might have uh, motor disabilities, uh, fine motor skills or, and such. So I'm gonna, ooh, that's a little too, too much for me. I'm gonna click uh, whatever color I want, change the color. Right now it has a border on it. I don't like the border being there, so I'm just gonna make it transparent. And then I will copy and paste, and I can drag and use that red bar to help me line it up with the other rectangles. But I'm not gonna do that for the whole board. I'm going to then uh, select all of these and copy and paste from there. That's what I thought, I thought I was gonna select them all. I'm clicking on my shift button and then I'm going to uh, use the copy and paste command and then they're all highlighted so you can drag them. And again, those little red bars are gonna show up to kind of help guide you as to whether or not it's centered. You can also use arrow keys um, or if you're like super particular and you can't quite drag it into the place that you want, zoom in, zoom in is going to be your friend um, for getting aligned if you're, if you're a visual perfectionist and you want it to look a certain way. So now for the students to play, you can be in a shared doc. You, they could be sitting with you and they can point at the ones that they want to uncover and you can delete and delete. Oh my gosh, I happen to find a pair. Um, and then if you delete and it's not a match, then you can just use the undo button. Or if the student wants to drag it away, or if that's a fine motor school that you want to practice as well as dragging it away, you'll still prefer to use the undo button to put it back, to teach that button to students, but also because if a student sort of drags it off center, it may be a visual clue to them of that's where that word was. It just depends on how, how much you want to uh, rein in on their little strategies like that. And then um, if you already have a board set, then once you create one and then you put in your own unique things in each of the others, you download your image. Well, you come back to this original because remember I can't delete the table in the background and you can click on any one of those and then Command A or Control A to select all of those, copy it, and then you can paste it on top and then change the color if you want to all at once while everything's highlighted. So you can mass produce several of these if you'd like. And if you want to keep them as individual files after you've mass produced, then just make a copy of the selected slide and save that as an individual uh, game piece so that if you were sharing it with students, they wouldn't have access to the others if you did not want them to have that access. Thanks for learning with me.